And we're live. Captain's log, stardate 8321.2. It has only been a few days since Commander von Wartburg was beamed off the Klingon battlecruiser Mechleth by forces unknown. Commander Sori's warbirds were destroyed at the same time, perhaps by charges like the ones planted by the alternate timeline Jensen and her co-conspirators on the Argo, for no external weapons fire was detected. Finally, the one person who might have been able to provide some answers, some sub-commander Vilek committed suicide at almost the exact same moment. In the wake of all this, the Argo has been escorted out of Klingon space, and we are en route to Starbase 24, where Admirals Cartwright and Bennett will be awaiting a full debriefing from myself and senior staff. Starfleet has launched a full investigation into Commander Von Wartburg's actions, although without Wolfgang himself, it is doubtful that any resolution is in the offing. Meanwhile, I have two Jensen's in sickbay, one suffering from neurological damage caused by temporal displacement, and the other infested with some type of nanomachines who also attempted to kill the first Jensen and blow up the Argo. As to the state of the timeline, who knows? Jensen Alpha cannot seem to return to her time, and Jensen Beta is not giving any answers. I don't like this. I don't like feeling so helpless and at the mercy of events beyond my kin. Usually I'd be leaning heavily on Wolfgang right now, but that option has been taken from me. One way or another, I'm going to find out who is responsible for that, and then I'm going to make sure they pay dearly for it. End log. As we uh, head over to the bridge of the Argo for the first scene... Where is everybody at currently? Um, just for the record, the other Jensen Beta is currently in the brig. I assume Rayburn will be at his station. I'm assuming Haggard's back on board. Yes, Haggard's back on board. I think I would probably be examining the uh, artifacts that we took off of Jensen Beta, hopefully with uh, uh, either Commander Martell or Chitre or both. Unless they were just your standard communicator type thing and nothing unusual. I'm looking through my notes real quick here. We took two things off her, I remember. Uh... Yeah. Um, actually, there have been a third item. But... We took three things off her, I remember. Yeah. Um, one just appears to be just a some sort of like hooded, like cloak type jacket. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, you know, some sort of strange. Um, almost like a tricorder-like device. Um, and the other is really like it's a communicator, but you've never seen the actual design before. Like you assume it's some sort of communication device because it has all the bells and whistles to it. It's just it's different. Do any of these look like uh, the device that Jensen Alpha was trying to use last time that were supposedly to return her to her timeline some of them
and I don't suppose Ensign Beta, uh, Ensign Beta, Jensen Beta has been any more forthcoming. No, she's been pretty much in her cell, kind of acting cocky. Fair enough. How far out from Starbase 24 are we? You're still a little out. You're nearing the border. Getting close. Okay. Did we get any sensor records on uh, the time period when the ships blew up and Wolfgang was beamed out and all that stuff? Someone would need to roll me a reason plus security. Difficulty of two, assisted by the ship's computers plus security. Uh, oh, I've got a 12. You said reason plus security? Yes. Difficulty two? Yes. Yes. Okay, do I happen to have a focus in this? Uh, focus would be sensor operations or... Investigation. Okay, then no, I don't. Uh, okay, take she trays rolling a 14 with uh, sensor operations focus. I'm rolling a 15 with no focus. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, it's definitely not Rayburn. He's not very reason-ish. It's not a strong point. To Trey's reason security is like 14, and he has to sensor out focus. I assume you're giving me a threat for that extra dice. Whoop, oh, are you? Yes, I thought I had mentioned that earlier. My bad. One momentum gained. I sent you the data unless you change discords. No, I, I'm seeing it. Captain, there's something strange here. Just one thing? Just one thing? Well, the explosion of the Romulan Warbird and it's, it's the timing. Us getting Wolfgang out was seconds before the explosion and i mean even the ones on the argo were set to go off at the exact same time that the warbirds went up it was perfectly timed now well, that leads me to suspect that it was probably jensen beta's cohorts who snuck on the romulan ship and like they did on the Argo. Any idea 
who the hell transported Wolfgang out? Or a momentum. Sure. Yeah, I don't see why not. Let me just go over these transporter logs real quick, sir. Don't know. There's no record of it. However, it was... This, the uh, transport does have a Starfleet signature to it. And I'm assuming there were no Starship vessels in the area that showed up on sensor. Now that, that I know of, sir. That confirms my impression. I happened to be looking at Wolfgang when he was beamed out, and the visual and aural effects were uh, definitely Federation. We couldn't be sure until looking at this. But who wants him, and why that badly? And they destroyed everybody... The plan was to destroy everyone around the Klingon vessel, but not the Klingon vessel itself. This appears to be a faction working against Jensen Alpha's faction. If we take it that Jensen Alpha is trying to restore the timeline to its proper place, the Jensen Beta is not. <clears throat> we managed to partially foil them, but not entirely. Can you make heads of tails or heads or tails of any of this uh, equipment we took off of Beta? I have no idea what it is, sir. Well, let's keep it under lock and key. I don't feel like trying to take it apart would be the smartest thing to do. Tempting as it might be. Agreed. I'm going to reach over to a comm unit. Haggard to sick bay. This is Sick Bay. How can I help you, sir? Dr. Ansas, I want you and your staff to go over all the readings, tests, blood work, etc. you had on Commander Von Wartburg from the period when uh, we beamed him up from the Orcus system uh, throughout the surgery and everything. Uh, see if you can find any anomalies anywhere. Um, I admit, Doctor, I'm, I'm kind of grasping at straws at this point, but go over your data carefully and see if you can find anything. Very good, sir. I will go over the details and hopefully find a bit of diamond in the rough, as it were. Keep me in the loop, Doctor. Haggard out. At that point, I'll head back onto the bridge. Status report. Ensign Aron kind of chipes in. Um, we're uh, about a light year and a half away from the Federation uh, clean on border.
Get that. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Any further, very well. Any further communications from General Kern, Mira? No, Captain, they just inform us to stay on course. All right. Over to sick bay real quick. Oh. Oh, shoot. You're not there. For the most part, things have been kind of quiet down um, in sick bay. The, uh, the only patient really is still Jensen mainly due to her degrading mental status. Um, as for the individuals you rescued um, that were given to you by the Klinons who were captured by House uh, Morvac, um, they're currently in assigned quarters, um, but all of them seem to be in good health. As for what the captain asked, uh, give me reason plus medicine assisted by the ship's computers plus medicine. Difficulty of two. Difficulty of two. Uh, this is going over. Uh, this is going over these scan logs on what we have on Warburg, right? Right. More or less. Uh, could I put that under the focus of radiology since he's good at that's his specialty in uh, looking over such uh, scans for even the most minute detail? Um, the ship does have advanced sick bay. Um, oh, there's that too. Okay. So if you wish to lower the difficulty by one, to have your medical sa staff assist with that, uh, be difficulty of one. Okay. Um. Uh... I'll roll it flat. Hope that's Trey, but that answers his uh, table. All right, one momentum gained. You'll walk over to a wall panel and click the comm. This is Dr. Ansys to uh, the captain. Haggard here. Go ahead, doctor. I've gone over the uh, results, and we've even used some of the more uh, the newer tech that we had installed to ensure the accuracy of our readings. And it would appear uh, to my eye that uh, 
Apart from his mental patterns being somewhat different, it does appear his DNA and other such markers are the same. This is indeed, according to uh, up to the Starfleet standard of medicine, uh, that this is indeed uh, Wolfgang von Wartburg. Um, it even has some uh, residuals of a childhood illness that he had one a long time ago that was treated. Um, hmm. Although the mental patterns being somewhat different, uh, it's hard to theorize as to what may have caused that, uh, other than just different memories. Uh, or the, I would presume to a certain degree that it was a matter of uh, the brainwashing uh, that he went under. Have you cross-referenced uh, the data post-Orcus with uh, pre-Orcus records on uh, Commander Wolfgang's previous visits to Sick Bay and physical records? And it just le leaves the comm open and just walks over and like uh, leaves it open, and walks over to his console and checks for it uh it would appear so sir yes very well thank you doctor haggard out and now for you We have to find some way to stop her uh, stop her from degrading. What about a cortical stimulator, Doctor? I think anything that we'd want to reduce stimulation, but we can... There's the saying that the things you have not tried are indeed the things that may be the path to enlightenment. So let's grab one of these and see what we can do. Yeah, we're going to see about uh, attaching some sort of cortical stimulator and try to help her uh, brain uh, uh, kind of be a bit more resilient and maybe heal itself to some degree. Yeah, it can use its electrical impulses to attempt to normalize and even restart the activity of sentient beings. Commonly used to treat seizures, hallucinations, and similar short term neurological problems. Uh, um, <clears throat> we'll make this a uh, daring plus medicine. This is by the ship's computers plus medicine. Uh, be difficulty zero, considering advantages, advantages at play. So. So pure momentum gain for you guys. Um, and I hope for a complication. Oh, Dr. Avalop, I think you should take the lead on this. I'll assist you with it. I think this is, uh, since this is your uh, rather daring idea. Oh, his daring's terrible. <laughs> it's daring medicine, you said? Yeah. Oh. Okay, then. Why is that on the wrong Uh, Xenopsychology? Or psychiatry? I think... I'm thinking more neurology for a focus for this. Um, yeah. Oh, wait. I'll just add that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Her, being her seventh activation. Neurology? Yeah. Okay. Fits in with her counseling stuff, too. Okay. Daring medicine, difficulty zero. Neurology is focus. Click that. Okay, here we go. Two momentum gained. There's the ship's Ooh. Here's medicine. Total of three, so you should have four momentum. Can Ansys throw in as well, or? Yeah, he can assist. Boop. 
Uh, xenobiology. Um, what you're doing is pretty Pacific, so yeah, probably it's not specialized. specialized thing. Hey, well, you get you're stimulating the hell out of her corticals. Um, <laughs> um, the degradation uh, starts to slow. Um, in her mental status, but it is still degrading. This is likely the best we can hope for, Doctor. If this uh, degradation is called by, caused by some sort of temporal anomaly or temporal strain. What do I give to have a neurologist aboard? What do you believe? What do you think... How long do we have before we lose her or lose her sentience, to put it that way? Jim? I think the GM is temporarily poofed. No, he's, he just he sent it to me. Um, no more than 12 days, Doctor. I don't like this. I will note that her doppelganger uh, seemed to know what the problem was and might be able to suggest some palliative measures if she could be persuaded to share that information with us. Wait, I, I thought she had left or vanished off into whatever hellish ether she came from. I believe Lieutenant Rayburn has her restrained in the brig, actually. Oh, wonderful. I have to ask for a favor from security. Hooray. Indeed, Doctor. It seems that that is becoming a habit with you. Yes, and here I thought I was going to have a nice, calm surgery rotation, but no. I have to go on the one ship that has the most security issues in Medbay. He hesitates at the calm and just stares at her a second, sighs. Avlop cocks a meaningful eyebrow. This is Dr. Ensis to the Chief of Security. Rayburn here. What can I do for you, Doc? Yes, it has come to my attention that our patient Jensen uh, is still degrading, uh, and I was I've just been informed that one of your prisoners, uh, her doppelganger, as it were, uh, may have some information that could result in saving my patient. As it stands, I'm going to lose my patient in the next 12 days. That's unfortunate, Doctor. You should work harder. We're using the most advanced medical facilities and staff available to the ship. If I could bring us to Earth Space Dock or San Francisco within the next 12 days, I would. But at this time, you are my next available option to improve her chances of living. So if you could at all speed up your work in getting information from our prisoner, that would be much appreciated by the staff here. I will try to make up for your short followings, Doctor. And get you that information. Very well. Sick bay out. Clicks it off and just looks over at Avob like, yep. <sighs> Tellerites. Indeed. Uh, the last thing I think I will either think of or ask Avop about, do we think that there's any chance that putting her in her stasis uh, pod or something like that would increase, would slow down the degradation? Do we have a stasis unit on board, GM? Yeah, um, at least according to the book, there would be one, but yeah. Yeah. 
So it's a sick bay would take care of the opportunity cost, but it is an escalation cost of two. Because we have to... only used after all possible treatments and procedures have already been tried. Um, the way the book describes it, it is kind of like a measure of last resort. Um, Hence why he's so hesitant to do it. It's like, I don't want to do it, but if yeah. uh, I, he's like, I don't know if we're going to get to more qualified doctors <laughs> in time before she dies. All right. I've got a message. Sorry, Prax, I got distracted by the rule book. What was unknown? No. Oh. It is possible doctor but um, I do not have enough data to know if it would if even stasis would actually slow this degradation again the causes are beyond current medical knowledge as far as I'm aware we're dealing with temporal mechanics which was not my specialty not exactly something taught at Starfleet Medical this funny feeling it'll be an optional course in the next few years. Mm. I suggest we continue to monitor her condition closely and prepare a stasis pod, but only uh, uh, place her within it if it becomes absolutely necessary. I concur. Uh, nurse uh, Blackford, be sure to monitor our patient in the, in the interim. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull up any Anything out of the books, maybe get some contact with Starfleet Medical once we get to Federation space. At this point, we've we are doing we have done all we can. We have other patients to attend to, and likely we'll have more of the same. Yes, he nod. He nods and looks down to his console, and he'll type off a report to be. Uh, so it's delivered to the captain, like a written report of the stick base current status, and they'll have Jensen's current uh, medical status. Because those that's calling up, but it's like go faster. It's like he's going as fast. He's likely going as fast as he can. So just so you know, that's that's currently where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. If I may interject real quick. I'm looking at the map currently, and Starbase two, um, 234 and Starbase 84 are much closer to our position than 24. I can't even find 24. <laughs> well, that's just my introduction, though. <laughs> uh, I point to the GM. I, I don't know. It's because you, uh, 24 is actually closer to Kronos, and you guys were almost near Kronos at the time, so Starbase 24 ended up becoming the closest Starbase for you guys. Otherwise, your home Starbase is actually Starbase 21. And... In the end, two admirals want us at Starbase 24, so. <laughs> All right, well, we can't argue with, with a admiral. Two of them. But <laughs> I'll probably have to go ahead and tell them at some point that there seems to be an issue there. Because I still can't find it. I'm looking all around Kronos, and I don't find an issue. And I moved us to the map. Due, pretty yeah. much do due west from Kittimer. My, my, my whole thought is just, uh, well, apparently we are going off a different map, in which case my, me trying to be a good con officer and pulling up a map is not helpful at all. <laughs> yeah, right there. Moving along. One day, I'll get, the mind, mind, mind. one day I'll get you a, a brig. 
One day. Promises, promises. Maybe, maybe uh, yeah, after Christmas. When there's pizza. One of these days, we'll get a wrap. <laughs> Mine's clearly either outdated or too advanced. In which case, if it's advanced, we should probably contain. So, uh, Mr. Rayburn, you enter the brig. Currently, your only prisoner is that of Jensen Beto. She's just kind of laying down in the, the bunk. I uh, walk over kind of near the forest field. You in there, you awake? Oh, it's the Tellerite. Yes, it's the Tellerite. Are you awake? If I was awake, would I not be speaking? Then you are awake. You are speaking. I have many questions for you. You must answer. Well, that's a, that's a debatable subject. I am happy to debate. For oh. starters, is there anything that can be done for your counterparts in sick bay? Our doctors are less than confident here and need all the assistance they can get. Now, if you don't mind me asking, why would I want to help my so-called duplicate? I did try to kill her after all. You're not helping her. You're helping our helpless doctor. You don't want him to feel bad, do you? I... <laughs> I don't understand why you would go with this line of questioning. Uh, this is... Where I come from, there are far more easier ways of getting information out of people. Ah, you tell me. Show me your advanced ways, if you know them. Well, if you want, I you have to let down this force field. Oh, you can't do advanced ways with force field up, huh? Well, you require a demonstration, do you not? I do. You demonstrate now, or force field stay up. He just kind of folds his arms across his chest. It doesn't matter. She'll be dead soon. Ah! I knew it. You have no advanced ways. Oh, it doesn't matter. My objective is already at least partially complete. Yes. You are a failure. You do not complete your mission. Well, unlike you, I have nothing but time on my hands. I do not have time on my hands. I have time on my wrist. So I show kind of my timekeeper. I was speaking in metaphors, Tellerite. I knew that. But did you? As he kind of stares across. Now, let us begin again. You help me save counterpart, yes? No. In fact, I want her dead. So why would I want to save her? How about this? You tell me. How do you want her dead? As in deceased, avius corpus. Yes, but how would you plan to make her dead? Well, I'm... Um Lucky for me, I don't have to do anything. She's already dying. Is she now? 
Oh, yes. Perhaps things have turned in sickbay and you do not know. I highly doubt your physicians have the, oh, I should say, medical knowledge to treat her. And even from where I come from, it's excruciating difficult to treat. I grant you, we don't have the best doctors in the fleet here. But sometimes even a broken clock is right. If you say so. I do say so. And our clock is very broken, which means we could be right. She just sits there and kind of laying down. Kind of smiling like she's like toying with you or something. Now, tell me, what is it you want? What I want? Yes, what do you want? Uh, better accommodations. Maybe I heard this place called Ryza. That is an... where I come from. It doesn't really exist anymore. Kind of want to see it, but. Uh. And for this, you would give us information. Maybe. I do not work with maybes. Yes or no. And I don't work well with not knowing that I'm going to be released. Now, is she still wearing the funky hood or is no, she it's like just the token? She's wearing sort of like what appears to be some sort of uh, like jumpsuit. In a way. It's a, a black um, unknown material clothing. And I'll uh, hold the suit up. This is very interesting material. What's it made out of? That's for me to know. And for you to never find out. Oh, I think we can find out. Our scientists much better than our doctor. Isn't your lead science officer no longer on board this ship? Federation has many science officers. I'm sure it'll take him a few hundred years to figure it out. In the meantime, got all the time in the world. And uh, Rayburn will kind of pace back and forth and wait. I have much time too. As you wish. I wait 
in my office where I can be comfortable and watch videos of Ryza, which you can't see. Oh, this is uh, from where I'm from. This is like a luxury resort in itself. Free food, 24 seven service. Where are you from? Obviously not from here. Ah. Some place that does not have free food. Is your counterpart also from there? Just remain silent. I'll take that as a yes. Very good. Now we're getting somewhere. As he pulls out a little pad and starts tapping on it. Now tell me, how long have you been doing this sabotage? work uh time is relative i'd be this could be could have done this you know for a few hours a few centuries a few millennia okay we'll put down a few years there we go Now, are there any more statements you wish to give at this time? Is there any statement that would make you go away? Yes, you could tell me how to save her so that I can make the doctor look bad. I already told you, you can't save her. Then I can't go away. How long do you think you can last with me at being here? Perhaps we should begin again. What is your name? Jane Doe. Jane Doe. All right. Common spelling. Of course. Mm, yes, yes. And Miss Jane. Tell me, where are you from? Here, there, doesn't really matter. I can see this is going to take some while. Perhaps we should begin again. And uh, he's basically just going to keep just harassing her over and over and over hours if necessary. Ah, I see. My favorite kind of interrogation. <laughs> Give me insight security. Uh, difficulty two. Can I uh, use a dice? 
for a uh, momentum for an extra dice. One momentum. Uh, you get the momentum back. All right. So after about eight hours of this, I uh, kind of finish up my report. You've been very helpful. Thank you. I will report this to the captain at once. My pleasure. Uh, I'll go and to my office out of uh, earshot and uh, find some sort of comm unit and uh, kind of press it and uh, Rayburn to uh, Captain Haggard here, go ahead Mr. Rayburn uh, Captain uh, if you have a moment can you step down to my office I've uh, collected a few interesting things on my way, Haggard out. And I will head down to uh, secure the security offices. Is uh, Martel still on the bridge or has he gone back to engineering? He's basically running engineering from his uh, console there on the bridge. Right. Commander Martel, you have the bridge. Hi, sir. All right, Mr. Rayburn, what have you found out? Well, uh, sir, she's clearly trained to resist interrogation. Um, my guess is that she is some sort of operative. Uh, her background is from harsh conditions, probably from some world that uh, either non-Federation or uh, of the like has uh, she has described conditions that are uh, very unfriendly, unsecure meals, you know, the the usual. Um, however, despite my uh, best efforts, uh, she doesn't give any specifics. However, she does seem to feel that time is on her side. Perhaps she knows of event that may be happening soon. I wouldn't be surprised. All right, Mr. Rayburn. Good work. Thank you, sir. Sorry I couldn't get more specifics for you. Well, if she's trained, as you say, you've probably gotten as much as anyone could. Thank you, sir. Would you, how would you describe her demeanor? 
or Confident. attitude. That's, Overly so. That's worrisome. I get the feeling that we are a little more than a nuisance. Perhaps a uh, a hurdle that she simply has to wait to clear itself. Fair enough. You don't mind if I drop it on her while I'm down here, do you? Of course not. I... Uh... Would you like me to accompany you or stay in my office? Just uh, monitor us from the monitors. Of course, sir. And I'll head over to the cell side of things. So, Jensen, my chief of security tells me that you are quite confident Sure. I guess you could say that. Well, you do appear to have every advantage with uh, what I assume would be what from my perspective would be foreknowledge and your perspective would be history of events to come. And from everything I can gather, you come from a pretty terrible timeline. Uh, it sounds like you've lived a hard life. She just sits there. So, is your mission to continue that timeline where you Never knew where your next meal was coming from, or obviously, according to our medical scans, have a history of malnutrition and physical trauma. I can only imagine mental trauma as well. Uh, is that the future you're so dedicated to maintaining? One where apparently RISA doesn't even exist. One of the jewels of the Federation. from your perspective. Well, perspective is a is a funny thing. It changes. And uh, I would suggest that perhaps yours <clears throat> could do with a different angle of view. I don't know what you your cohorts have planned. I don't even know what sort of faction you represent in this temporal cold war. But. Well, this is not a cold war, Captain. Gone hot, has it? Let's just say if things keep going the way they are, we've already won. I assume that some sort of bloody conflict between the Federation, the Klingons, and maybe even the Romulans thrown in for extra seasoning as part of this process, which will do nothing but leave the galaxy a smoldering wreck for God only knows who to come up and take over things. Maybe this was even the period where Ryza was destroyed in your perspective. Perhaps. Why would you want that? Billions of lives, innocence on all sides, children, people just trying to get through every day your actions 
causes their blood to rain down on you. Sure, you can go back to your wherever the hell you're from and uh, have completed your mission and everything. But do you ever really think that those stains will go away? That you'll ever be able to look into a mirror again without hearing the screams and being followed by the dead the rest of your life? And if this does create your timeline, <laughs> It's generations of terror and generations of trauma and abuse. All on you. Now. He just smiles. Certainly not something I could live with. Get used to it. <clears throat> well, I suppose I have no choice but to see if I can... Have my doctors rig up, rig up some sort of system to plug you into the other Jensen and use your brain waves to keep her alive. I think I read something or another about that in one of Wolf King's security briefings. Might even stabilize her enough to give me a little bit of information. Some sort of... Oh, what was it? What was it? Hmm... Neural pad. I mean, after all, you're her, she's you. Your synaptic pathway should probably run about the same rate. Might be worth a shot, don't you think? And then you could at least have the satisfaction of knowing that, in spite of all your efforts, you managed to help keep your doppelganger alive. Only that were that easy, Captain. Well, things never are. So, <clears throat> I will leave you to it. Uh, tell me, what are those machines running amok in you? Oh, these little things? Nothing you need to be concerned about. Just smiles. Of course. Of course not. And I'll leave. Head back to Rayburn's office. Any sort of spikes on any of the sensors? During any of that? Uh, GM? <laughs> no, she managed to maintain a consistent uh, body level at all times, clearly trained to regulate her responses. Hmm. There are times, Mr. Rayburn. I wish Federation protocols for prisoners were not quite so humane. Indeed, sir. Very well. Keep at it. And I head back for the bridge. Aye, Aye sir. All right. Uh, as you head back to the bridge, we're going to go uh, to scene two. Go down one momentum. I'm just clearing the I know. theater of mind. Commander Wolfgang. Beam aboard the USS Atlantis with Captain Mitsurigi and her team. As you uh, beam aboard, you recognize the... Uh, older style of transporter rooms, even before the days of the uh, Constitution class. Um, as she's kind of showing you uh, 
Yeah, I don't have a map for this. Take time. As she's uh, escorting you uh, through the decks, uh, the corridor of the Atlantis, you notice that there's several deck plenty, uh, deck paneling missing from the on um, the walls. Some of the lights are kind of flickering. Um, the ship is obviously seeing better days. If not, it should have been mothballed twenty years ago. Ray, I hesitate to ask, but what class of ship are we standing on? I get the funny feeling I'm somewhat queasy, so. That means we're using one of the older style transporters. <clears throat> oh, Post refit, thankfully. Forgive me, uh, Commander. Uh, well, she's old, but uh, she still holds. So, Walker class. He <laughs> blinks at that. Well, I suppose it'd be too much to ask for you to have state of the line, considering your situation. Not like anyone's gonna miss a Walker. He's so, kept us alive since then, though. Just kind of look a little saddened. There are some spare quarters around here that you're more than welcome to stay at. So I'll get you back. Well, after a... I would actually much prefer uh, Captain, I suppose. Uh, that since I assume you're the ranking, you're the commander of this merry band. Uh, I'd rather get a shot of something for my stomach, and I'd rather put myself to good use and to make any effort to getting myself back to the Argo or in contact with them as soon as possible, or indeed insisting you with whatever it is you've wrapped yourself into. I'm not one to sit idle. I've done that long enough. Of course, um... Right this way to sick bay. She Thank you. escorts you Whoa. to sick bay. Uh, it's kind of a mess, you know. People kind of go through here. And it seems like just people gather stuff or use something and then really don't put it away, right? She goes, I have to forgive my crew. Let me guess. You don't have a doctor aboard. Unfortunately not. Uh, remember, just face palms for a second, like, oh god. <laughs> you remember the story I told you last time we met on um, Trill? He beamed down to the planet's surface where I was hoping to keep most of my crew safe. And they were... And she hesitates to finish. She grabs the a hypo and uh, this should do it. And uh, injects you with the. Uh, don't worry, the the medication's new. Gotta keep a stock. Well, at least we're not breaking up the scalpels and leeches. Sorry if I'm a bit. Sorry if I'm being cranky. I'm just not used to being separated from my subordinates like this, and I don't know what's happened to them, and I'm trying to keep a level head, and my current surroundings are not helping. Actually, point of fact, uh, well, let's organize my thoughts a bit. What are your intentions, Captain? Figure out who uh, is behind. Um, I know Admiral Marcus is part of this somehow, but to get justice for the people of my crew who died 20 years ago. Do you have any allies within the fleet or within Federation space? People you can trust? Beyond the people in this room, anyway. Very few. Though there is someone uh, on Trillius Prime that I've been communicating with. He's been somewhat helpful, though he's arguably probably in worse shape than me. 
and then the state that what happened to his ship. Oh. Good news on good news. Uh, do you have any access to the Federation navigational uh, advisories? Where ships are and so on? Or are you uh, completely out of the grid? We're completely out of the grid. It's the only yeah. way we can stay uh, alive. And you can't get the ship safely near a starbase without alerting Marcus, because I don't know who his men are, and neither do you. So I can't just go, just drop me off anywhere. Speaking of that, hmm. we were going on uh, hunches of intel. Um, we were following a group of traders, human traders, that have been working with House Morvac. Um, what we found on that planet was that House Morvac was working with Romulan intelligence. Um, but even what was more troubling is that this, these traders, they were getting cloaking technology, technology for starship construction. The list goes on, yet there's no name attached to it. All right. But here's my Oh, go ahead. Sorry. We did manage to capture one of the traders or the traders. Um He's not talking. But I think you might find this interesting. Follow me. Very well. Lead on, Captain. Uh, she escorts the two of you towards uh the brig. The Atlantis, and uh, on open the doors, you notice someone familiar. It's Admiral Marcus. No. Oh, one of the ones I met before on the planet. Yeah. Um, he was part of that listening post that was captured. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking the wrong person. Oh. Uh. Oh, I know who you mean. When I step in, I just kind of fold my arms at him. <clears throat> he just kind of looks at you, and then Captain Ray is like, he stops for a second, and then. Wolfgang, what are you doing here? That's my question to you, Jet. Well, on an undercover operation. Well, I got snatched by her. Traitor. Don't tell me you're working with her. As you all know, one takes assets where one can. And at the moment, you happen to have crossed one of mine. And at the end, I now have some rather disturbing information regarding you involved with trading with people we have, uh, at best, chilled relations. So, and as I recall, I'm still wearing my uniform, and you're not. And I need some really good answers before uh, my report involves you being a traitor. So please enlighten me. <laughs> Not in if front you have of operation. Her, she's not Starfleet anymore. For all I know is I can't even trust her. 
Captain Ray, if you would do me a professional courtesy, I need to speak with my counterpart here. And I would request of you and your crew to not uh, record this information in your logs. By the book, he's right. And officially, I can't have you on my records as, ha as having known about any of this. Whether or not I trust you is irrelevant. It's my my superiors that I'll have to answer to at the end of this. Very well. Steps out of the room. Uh, can I get a quick insight? Do, do I think she'll actually not listen in or is she just saying that to make me ease up? Uh, give me insight command. Or medicine. I'll take command. Um, Difficulty of one. No focus. I'll throw in my one of the momentum at it. Uh, you Overkill. get two momentum. Uh, she seems like she will. She's gonna do what you ask, though. It seems like she's gonna probably expect something in return. Yeah, that's fair. Like, she trusts you enough, like, okay, I'll allow this, but I'm gonna... She's probably more than likely gonna ask you a bunch of questions afterwards. Yeah. I'll wait till she leaves. She left. The uh, doors... Close. He, like, just stands up from his, uh... His, uh it's bench. Walks the first field and uh, leans in. You gotta get me out of here, Wolfgang. I need to know what you're doing, trading cloaking parts to the enemy. You have to know that that looks bad. Also, I have a listening post that's in pieces with a bunch of dead people on it, and your name's supposed to be there, and you're not there. What? I'm been... looking at a rogue agent for my intelligence, so you can understand been... how upset under... I am right now. I've been undercover for two years. What? I was never at that. What listening post? Listening post. The commander remembers. I don't. One, two, nine. Thank you. Listening post one, two, nine. Thank you. God, that's. It's 12 sectors away. At least I assume. I have no idea where we're at. What's your authentication code? Charlie Tango 87 Black. Just try and note that down. We're going to have to check it, check that against the uh, database but when we get back in contact. Hi, Captain. Uh, yes, Commander. I haven't got promoted yet, but thanks for the vote of confidence. All right. Well, you know the drill right now. Uh, I have to verify who you are, but I'm not exactly on a start on a Starfleet regulated ship, so I'm going to have to wait a bit. But first off, I need your code. Authentication, please. Can't be too careful. Alpha Sierra 226. And I'm currently status blue, given my, given where I am. Secretly indicating that I'm, I'm not intentionally off my own ship. This is unintentional. <laughs> Be begging your pardon, Commander, but who is this? Commander Jet Be uh, Beckman. Uh, Commander, no. How? Why are you wearing Lieutenant Pips and she's got Commander Pips? Oh, sorry, Commander. I take off the Commander's Pips. Yeah, we swap when, around. When you went down under the Romulans, I thought it was worth a shot of maybe convincing them that I was the commander and 
valuable asset, so maybe they would leave you uh, alone, or at least till second. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Well, chalk up, chalk one up to Roman, uh, to Romulan intelligence for knowing the difference. But good try, anyway. But wait, wait, Commander Beckman was an intelligence asset, looking up all of the. He was supposed to be gathering in, intel on the Klingon movements at the border and House Morvok, right? And and on one twenty nine. But you say you've never been on one twenty nine. You have painted on, it perfectly. Then well, then, never set foot on listening post one two nine. Well, then who's the other Beckman? And who's the real Beckman, for that matter? I'm the real Beckman. And that's what authentication codes are for, Shashran, to verify such confusions. Because right now, this could be a Romulan agent. This could be some augment, or the other person could be a Romulan agent, some augment, Klingon agent. Fair enough, Commander, because that other Beckman's been going from Starbase to Starbase along the border and has, <laughs> as far as our security intelligence goes, had full access to Federation dispositions. The entire yep. border region could be compromised. We've got to get this information to Starfleet as soon as possible, sir. A quick security lesson, Lieutenant. Um... When one is suspecting another person of their authenticity, one doesn't voice uh, the full breadth of their suspicions in front of them. But uh, at the moment, I don't think he's going to run away or somehow contact any of his other associates. If he's legitimate, then you did nothing wrong. If he's actually an enemy agent, uh, you just re released enemy uh, secrets to the enemy. So I'll forgive him for now because I know you're a little rattled, but for next time. Well comes to it i'll just shoot him sir please don't be face bombs <sighs> we are on the same side here all right it's not go shooting people just yet i need all the information you have on house morvac and your dealings with them because i'm I looking the same direction dealing with house morvac it was i infiltrated a group of traders who was working third party and they were transferring cargo between one location to another. I was just getting to the bottom of it to where I needed to figure out where these supplies were going. Starfleet Intelligence was very specific, uh, suspicious of House Morvok for quite a while. Uh, who was your handler? Admiral Cartwright. All right. We'll verify with him and check with the codes to see what's going on. But until then, you're unconfirmed. Um, just ran. Could you quickly grab me a tricorder, something that maybe is in uh, that works, and we're going to get ourselves a medical scan of our friend here. Uh, I'll do my best to find one, but this tech's pretty old. And I'll I'll, just I'll take a syringe at this point. Head back to sick bay, see if you can <laughs> scram. Uh, scrounge up the tricorder that's in working order. That will cost you a momentum. <laughs> Let us give it. <laughs> what a tricorder costs you. <laughs> this damn ship. She, she comes back with a, a you know, a, a, a definite, it like... It's just yeah, old. It, it works, but it's old school model, you know, with the, the black and chrome finish. <laughs> Oh, I haven't used one of these since the Academy. <sighs> well, it works. Starts fiddling with it to pop open the compartments to get at his tools that they're usually stored inside. All right, come close to the force field. I can't bring it down, but I can scan you through it. He stands close to the force field. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll, I'll scan him basically to get a, a baseline biometric read off him so I can compare it against uh, Starfleet records. Uh, reason plus uh, medicine uh, difficulty of one. Okay. I'll throw momentum at it. Get it back. Mm, 
most of is in perfect health. His cholesterol might be a little high. Uh, do I detect uh, as a free as my freebie question? Do I detect any like drugs or any other anything in him that shouldn't be there, like a implant or something like that? No, there's nothing inside of him. All right, I have your authentication code. I have your biometrics. I'd ask for your ID chips, but uh, somehow I think you didn't. You were smart enough not to bring those with you. He kind of grins at that. Like, that's like bringing your passport, your actual passport on a spy mission. It's like, you would never do that. He just kind of gives you a look like, what do you take me for? I have to, forgive me, I have to take whatever levity I can. I'll see what I can do to get you back uh, out of the cold. But for now, I'm going to have to work with Captain Ray here. And what I can tell you for now is that this asset's good for now. Um, and I have no reason to think it's gone rotten. And once you're verified, I can give you more details. But for now, that's all you can. That's all I can give you. Before I go, do you have any protocols for being uh, retrieved? If you have a signal or anything like that, or are you supposed to go to a certain place? Supposed to go to a certain place. Of course, can't be that easy. Where? If you say Earth Space Dock, I'm gonna cry. Uh, no. <laughs> supposed to head to Akmar. There's a tiny little restaurant. If I can get you the Akmar, do you think you could uh, also extract myself from my officer here? Yeah, it's we're gonna fly. It's really close to Starbase One Five Seven, though. How close are we saying? Same uh, in the same uh, system, or are we uh, at least one star system away? Uh, at least a system away. That's still close. But it's not on their doorstep. I'll see what I can do. No promises. I'll, as long as I'm here, you should be all right. Don't tell her anything. Game. You, you know how it is. Handle assets with as minimal information as possible, but I'm gonna have to feed her something. I know what I'm doing. I've been at this. I've been at this a bit longer than you. He just kind of rolls his eyes, like, "Oh, he's been undercover for two years." <laughs> All right, Lieutenant. That little speech I just gave you—that goes for everyone else on this ship as well. Hi, Commander, but what the hell is going on here? Someone, well, it's bad either way. Either someone has been infiltrating and, be, and pretending undercover for the last while doing illegal trades, or we've had a uniformed officer wandering around inside our star bases and gathering way too much intelligence on us. This is extremely bad, and we need to get in front of an admiral. And if we can get to the Argo, that'd be ideal, because they need to know what's going on. Their mission's compromised at this point. Let's just hope they made it out of Klingon space, all right. Agar's a stubborn one. If it comes to starships, he's going to get them out and everyone else he can. I think we'll be sooner in uh, debris. If that thing even became debris, it would will itself across the border and let itself be known. Hi, sir. Now to talk to a captain who isn't a captain. Hooray. Oh, have you secured yourself a sidearm? I'm assuming she's still carrying the rifle she beamed up with. <laughs> she is. Slung, but, you know. Check the battery in case they disarmed it. Although I don't know if they're... I think the transmitters from back then could do that. He looks worried for a second. I'll check. I'll check. You can probably tell by the weight. It still has a charge. 
It's good, Commander. All right. We're all friends here, but all the same. Uh, keep that with you. Understood. And I'll walk. I'll, I'll walk out to find Ray. I imagine. Uh, you go back out in the corner, and she's standing right there, waiting for you. Captain. Well, Commander. Well, I need to see a navigational chart, and I need to figure out a location that we may be able to drop myself and my officer off at and possibly verify the man you have in there, because the man you have in there may be an intelligence operative, but I need to confirm who he is. And... This is not going to be an easy one, I can tell you that. Where is this darn thing? Oh, I see it. Up there. Oh, give me a frigging cool. <laughs> well, at least we're not that far from the Argos. Last known. Great. Um, um, problem. Where so, are we? <laughs> um, as she's showing you a navigation, the Atlantis you can see is right there. <sighs> There's a reason that we're this far out. <laughs> And she's traveling. Atlantis is heading in course the this direction. way. I need, and at this point I'll bother pointing out to her, I need to go this way. I need to get to Akamar. Given your current charts, you're going the wrong. You're going the opposite way I am. So I think I'm at a. Pro I have a bit of a problem. Whoa! Forget Colossus. It's a That's super a dreadful ship. It shrank. It shrank. It shrank. There, I know how to speak English. <clears throat> I would love to take it wherever you need to go, Commander. However, I have a place that I need to be. So do I. I have to do two things. One, confirm that I actually have an agent in there. And I need to make contact with Admiralty I can trust that isn't under our mutual adversaries employ. Ideally, I would say just drop me off at 234 or something, but I don't know if I, if that's a secure location for uh, me. And the only one the my asset in there knows is uh, Akmar. So unless you have a contact otherwise, or you have any ideas on the other ships I could uh, jump on. Because at this point, I'm holding on to an intelligence that involves well the entire Klingon frontier so and if it gets if I don't handle this properly uh, we might very well lose a lot of uh, sectors in this area and I point like this from K7 up to 234 with all due respect Commander we're going I am, we're so close to figuring out who's behind all of this. Got data from that officer that you supposedly, when you, that you talked to, that you may think who he is. Mm -hmm. There was information on his ship that showed where they were going to drop off the supplies at. We're on that on our way to that location. Uh, GM, is Starbase One Two Three a thing yet? It 
was under construction at the time during um, the Azure. The Azure. <laughs> so it's probably there, just not fully built. It's close to completion. <laughs> it's like the Death Star, but, you know, nice. Um, uh, okay. And you finding out who you need to find out is also important. Great. Chase two hairs, you get neither. All right. But we have two hunters here. Uh, do you know any? Con do you know anyone we could leave a message that could possibly contact, make make uh, secure contact with either uh, Starfleet's uh, Federation data or even the Federation database on, sorry, the Starfleet database or in fact contact the Argo. Someone who could uh, carry a message along and they can get back to us without us directly hailing the Argo or uh, any Starfleet personnel. Perhaps. Well, how do you feel like dealing with Klingons? Wouldn't be the first time I've dealt with a Klingon asset, and sadly, it won't be the last. We can leave a message with one of, uh, an operative within the clean on, uh, high command. They can get a message to Trulius Prime, which then will re be relayed from there. I know it's a long way about it, but. It's the only way we can secure. do it without giving you away. Hey, not to insult you, Captain, but you're sure of your intel? This is going to get you results? If not, it's at least another piece of a very large puzzle. Oh, this could be a fun court martial when I have it. All right. I'm going to type in, I'm going to encrypt the message to give to your, uh, to give to you. And, um, you know, who's going to be getting the message of Trillius prime. Um, all I need them to do is get it into the hands of one or two people, either captain Haggard and, or, uh, if he's not available for whatever reason, uh, we can have it, uh, if we can get it to Admiral Cartwright. They'll have the appropriate codes since they'll actually know who they'll be able to recognize my uh, clearance codes and be able to decrypt my message. And now I need to encrypt the message with older computers. That's great. That's wonderful. Since I imagine I want to be able to, since I imagine your Klingon friends may wish to pry into our affairs, uh, I'll have to make sure it's encrypted. And I'll have to encrypt it for your sake as well, since right now I have to minute until I confirm what's going on, I have to keep this under my hat since officially we're not actually working together. And officially I am AWOL at this point if I don't head straight back to friendly space. So hooray for that. Do you have any objections to this plan of action, Captain? No, um, go ahead and get your message assembled and encrypted. And you can hand it to my communications officer. In the meantime, as a Starfleet officer aboard a ship with Federation citizens aboard, at least, I offer my services as either a science officer or indeed maybe perhaps organize your med bay so it's actually in some semblance of uh, Starfleet code. He seems annoyed that it, he see that he's just he looks visibly annoyed that it's this, that disorganized. I appreciate any help you're willing to offer, Commander. Oh, um, and uh, I think I'm supposed to say you're under arrest and uh, please surrender, but uh, somehow I think um, that's not something I can affect and uh, I'm not in a real hurry to do that, but I said the word, so officially I did try to detain you. 
at that trans antennas just lay flat back against her head. Welcome to intelligence work. It's never easy. You can arrest me when this is all over with, Commander. There. She we now have a witness. Give me one second here, um, but we're sure. gonna cut to the next scene. Uh, back to the Argo here in a second. Sure, sure. Sorry, I had the proof like that. That's cool. Boom. All right, sorry about that. Um, on the Argo, um, on the view screen, you actually see uh, the image of a Nearly fully completed Starbase 24 of the newer design, similar to Earth Space Dock. <sighs> Lieutenant Mira uh, informed Starbase 24 that we are arriving. Hi, sir. Starbase uh, 24 confirms you're clear to dot. Take us in, Mr. Tashark. Hi, sir. I guess I'll take us in slowly. Yeah, you move her in slowly and then, uh, as you get pretty close, then the starbase takes over and uh, tractors you inside. We're ready for impulse power. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't know much lingo when it comes to con. That's why I wanted to be an engineer. You're all good. So if I, I've already received the orders about meeting the admirals, correct? Correct. Yes. Your contact to uh, Starbase 24, my compliments to Admirals Cartwright and Bennett. Um, and I'm ready to meet with them at their pleasure. We're getting a single from Starbase 24 that uh, we are not to disembark from the Argo. It's something to do with security protocol. Hmm. Very well. No shore leave, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'll just head down to the mess hall and eat there. Will the admirals be coming aboard, or have they deigned to inform us? <clears throat> They'll be arriving shortly. Um, I suppose they're requesting all 
they're requesting that all senior staff uh, meet on the Argos um, um, observation lounge um, at 1600 hours. Very well, Lieutenant. <clears throat> Compliments to the senior staff and let them know the admirals are expecting. Mr. Rayburn. Yes, sir. Our guests from uh, House Morvac, Commander Beckett and his associates, um, keep them under unobtrusive guards. We saw what happened to Wolfgang when he was in the Romulan hands for less than a day, and they were with him for a week. Let's not have a repeat only on a Federation Admiral this time. Yes, sir. I'll personally escort them. Well, you'll need to be part of the briefing, too. I'm afraid you'll have to leave this one up to your team. And uh, let's not uh, put them in the same room with the Admirals unless the direct directly request it. And if so, even then, I'll try and talk about it he seems a little frustrated as he has never been a fan of uh, bureaucracy and having to deal with meetings but yes sir I'll have somebody else discreetly keep an eye on them welcome to being a department head Mr. Rayburn <clears throat> And so, yeah, we'll meet the uh, admiral uh, in the observation, admirals in the observation lounge. Gather up all the data that we've collected. Um, I have ANSYS representing medical, um, me, Martel, um, I guess Chitre for science, uh, Tashorik for uh, Helm. I think that's everyone. And of course, uh, Rayburn for security. And Martel. I said Martel. Oh. I didn't leave him out. It's okay. It's okay. I'm assuming we're jumping straight to that scene that works for everybody yeah okay I'll leave the two head tables for admirals I'm the captain and I'm huge. I see that. <laughs> I'm the con officer, I'm the smallest. So that's what Admiral Ben looks like. I'm the chief of security, I'm the most annoying. Shut up, Pitmos. Admiral on deck. That is. Welcome aboard the Argo, Admiral Cartwright. Admiral Bennett, good to see you both again. Likewise, uh, Lucy's. Kind of <laughs> just kind of stands at the end uh, while Cartwright hovers over there and takes a seat. And it kind of speaks up. We've asked all you here for a debriefing. I want to know reports on what just happened in clean on space. Is that Bennett talking or Cartwright? That's Bennett. Right. Cartwright's just kind of listening in. Of course, sir. Uh, after the Klingon raid on listening post 129 uh, on... Start at 8317.9. Uh, on 8318.5, the Argo uh, 
with permission from Admiral Bennett, uh, entered Klingon space to investigate uh, signs of uh, Romulan activity on the planet and the Orcon system, where the warp trails of the raiding vessels had disappeared to. Uh, Commander von Wartburg led an away team consisting of himself, uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Shashran, Lieutenant Rayburn, uh, Dr. Brennan, uh, and, uh, oh, what's her name? And Lieutenant Junior Grade Poss to the planet's surface. Um, the team became separated from uh, Commander Wartburg and Lieutenant Shashran, and then had to be quickly evacuated to the presence of scores of Romulan troops. And I'll just tell him the whole bit of the past few adventures, unless you want me to actually do that. It's in your own words, so however you wish to proceed. All right. <clears throat> um, we confronted the uh, Romulan commander, a commander of Sori. Uh, who claimed that they were just conducting scientific uh, observations and tests on the uh, seismically active and mined out Orcon uh, Dilithium Mines facility. Um, however, we had, uh, we had reason to believe that there was a larger plot afoot. Uh, okay. There's we had reason to believe that there was something a bit more nefarious uh, afoot uh, when the Romulans cloaked and the Klingon uh, vessel uh, Mechleth uh, entered orbit. We made ourselves known to the Klingons. Um, we had, I had received intelligence that High Chancellor Gorkhan's life was in danger. Um, Stop you there, Captain. Intelligence from whom? Cartwright speaks up. Admiral, um, this intelligence came by way of a temporal operative from uh, Starfleet. Temporal? Then it kind of... Much like Cartwright looks a little unamused by the what he thinks is a joke. I'm quite serious, Admiral. She is currently in our sick bay, um, and scans will reveal both chronoton radiation and uh, some sort of temporal anom anomalies which are currently affecting her uh, neural synapses. Um, and indeed, Chancellor Gorkhan was uh, attacked um, by none other than Commander Wolfgang von Wartburg. Uh, after being missing in action for approximately one day, he beamed down with the Romulans to the summit um, and attempted to uh, assassinate uh, High Counselor Gorkhan. Uh, Lieutenant Jensen, uh, the young lady in sickbay and my temporal contact, uh, prevented the assassination by literally placing her body between Chancellor Gorkhan and the beam, the, the killing beam from uh, Commander von Wartburg's uh, phaser. Uh, at which point, as you can imagine, the Klingons were more than a little upset. Fortunately, I managed to reason with General Kern to allow us to uh, accompany them for the trial of Commander von Wartburg. Fortunately, Chancellor, uh, High Counselor Gorkhan was not killed. Upon examination, both by Vulcan mind meld by Dr. Avlop and uh, detailed scans by Dr. Ansas, uh, it was discovered that Commander von Wartburg had undergone uh, incredibly invasive uh, brainwashing and actual neural surgery. We have all the data from our scans. Dr. Uh, Ansus was able to correct these uh, deviations 
which were causing Commander von Wartburg to believe that Starfleet intelligence had sent him on a mission to assassinate uh, the High Counselor. Um, unfortunately, once uh, his brain had been restored to its previous condition, Commander von Wartburg suffered severe memory loss. We accompanied the Klingons to rendezvous with the Romulans, trying to get to the bottom of, of all of this. When the rendezvous occurred, uh, intruders boarded the Argo. We were barely able to uh, disarm several explosive devices that uh, they planted throughout the vessel. And uh, apparently some of their cohorts managed to do the same on the Romulan vessels, uh, which were destroyed at the same time that the uh, Romulan uh, subcommander committed suicide. The subcommander uh, had been accused by his commander of running a rogue operation involving Commander Berg. Uh, his death, of course, shut down that avenue of investigation and possible intelligence. Um, Without Commander von Wartburg, who was transported away seconds later by what it was apparently by our sensor readings and from my own visual and aural uh, sighting, a Federation transporter beam, uh, the Klingons with Gorkon alive and no one to uh, put on trial escorted us to the border and we came back here to Starbase 24. You will be interested to see the uh, a couple of things, admirals, and I walk over to the view screen and pull up a view of a split screen, one half Jensen in sick bay, the other half Jensen in the brig. These two individuals are genetically identical, although their physiologies uh, show differences in long-term diet, uh, medical history, um, they are both, however, uh, what's Jensen's first name, GN? Allison. They are both, however, Allison Jensen. We believe from two different timelines. The young woman in our brig was one of the individuals responsible for attempting to destroy the Argo. The young lady in sickbay uh, was, is my contact. And I don't believe this is the first time she has contacted me, although I cannot remember her except for a brief sighting uh, several months ago. This is probably my strongest proof of what I'm saying about temporal agents and temporal machinations into our timeline. Um, our medical scans and records confirm, and I pull those up, these are genetically identical women, not twins. But the same individual. It's all spelled out in much greater detail in myself and my officers' reports, admirals, but in a nutshell, I believe that someone is trying to provoke some sort of conflict between uh, the Federation and the Klingon Empire, and perhaps the Federations, the Klingons, and Romulan for true, Romulans for true galactic war. For what reason, I do not know. Um, the assassination of Gorkhan was prevented. The destruction of the Argo was prevented. But I don't think that the danger is necessarily passed. And honestly, gentlemen, I'm not terribly comfortable with the two of you being aboard my ship in these situations. You were likely safer where you were. Unfortunately, it was a needed... Tran uh, transit, Captain. Though, whatever you did seems either by luck or some misfortune, as Admiral Bennett speaks up. Uh, war has been averted. The Klingons are removing their forces from the borders, and so are we. Thank goodness for that, Admiral. Uh, I think the credit belongs as much to High Counselor Gorkhan and General Kern as it does to anyone. What is unsettling is uh, Commander uh, Wolfgang von Wartburg's actions. If 
Did he Agreed. seem any lucent or sane after his so-called procedure, according to these medical documents that were provided? Sane, yes, but with absolutely no memories of any part of his life. Uh, he was able to converse and read and, and you know take care of himself, but didn't know who he was, had no memory of his career, his position in Starfleet. Uh, almost like a blank slate, if you will. Were any of his memories starting to return after the procedure? I had several conversations with him on the Klingon uh, vessel uh, en route to meet with the Romulans, and there was no indication that his memories were coming back. He was uh, reading his own personnel file and uh, it was bringing nothing back to him nor did conversing with me even though we have known each other for many years but my prisoner this uh jensen beta as i'm calling her she's far too confident and far too comfortable with the situation for me to be able to believe that we have avoided the worst of it i believe that some force is playing, attempting to play us all for fools for their own ends. And at least some of the people involved have access to Starfleet and Federation technology, judging by the fact that the transporter used to remove Commander Von Berg was Federation. Admiral Ben kind of looks to Cartwright, kind of nods. Admiral Ben stands up. Uh, Captain, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to have this conversation in private. Uh, your officers are dismissed. They have nothing else to add to the record. I nod to everybody. Uh, Rayburn leaves happily as uh, he doesn't like meetings in the first place. Commander Martell, you have the bridge. Uh, yes, sir. There is belief, Lucy's, that uh, there might be a rogue faction within Starfleet. It's what? very possible that uh, your fir former first officer was a part of that. Sorry, sir. I can't believe that. I mean, I know Wolfgang was in intelligence for years and very capable operative, but I've never met anyone as loyal to Starfleet and to the Federation. All right, straightens up his jacket. It may become a shock to you, Captain, but you may have not have known your first officer as well as you thought he That's as may be, Admiral, but uh, this rogue faction, what can you tell me about them? And what do they want? Answer we're still trying to uncover. But everything points to Admiral Marcus. Why am I not surprised? What's his end game? Only we knew that we could stop him before it happens. What? 
I've been racking my brains, sirs, and I can't get my head around it. What war with the Klingon Empire only ends up with both the, both the Federation and the Klingons exhausted and the Romulans ready to swoop in. War with the Klingons, the Romulans, and the Federation leaves this in two quadrants of the galaxy blasted back into maybe not the Stone Age, but just for some third power, the Gorn up to pick up the pieces. Admiral uh, Bennett kind of nods. It's definitely a puzzling mystery to solve as to who would really benefit from this war if it were to happen. Well, what are your orders? Admiral Bennett kind of looks to Cartwright. You may find this troubling, Captain, but you're going to have to travel through the corridor along the neutral zone uh, into the Beta Quadrant uh, near the Shackleton Reach. It has some strange spottings from Starbase 123 um, of odd activity in the area um, lately. Um, typically, you know, we would prefer you to have it on your routine slamming area, but you are the fastest and most well-armed ship within the fleet currently. We need eyes on what's going on in that region. Well, we can certainly do that. Um, we did recover the missing officers, for, including Commander Beckett from listing post 129. I've been keeping them under light guard uh, unobtrusively. Uh, my fear was that uh, if Commander von Wartburg could be turned in a day, what could happen to officers who had been in the Romulan and Klingon hands for over a week. Very prudent of you, uh, Captain, um, but you'll turn him over to Starfleet security here at the Starbase. We'll uh, handle his debriefing. Understood. Uh, if neither of you mind, I would rather wait and uh, safely back aboard Starbase 24 before transferring the prisoners, however. Just out of an overabundance of caution. Of course. And what of your two time traveling? Obviously, you can hand them over to us where we can do a thorough investigation on this matter. I'd rather keep them aboard, Admiral. Uh, Kind of looks at you like, are you sure that's wise? <laughs> no, Admiral, I'm, I'm not sure it's wise at this point. I'm not sure uh, which end is up too often. However, those two remain my uh, perhaps best chance of getting the information I need to avert whatever it is that may happen. Plus, uh, one of them's condition is deteriorating, and Starbase 24 isn't complete yet. At this point, our advanced sick bays are her best chance for survival. As you see fit, Captain. Admiral Carlyke kind of raises an eyebrow. Who raises an eyebrow? Uh, Cartwright kind of raises an no. eyebrow like, sure, that's wise. <laughs> well, Admirals, as soon as we're done with the transfers, we'll head towards the Shackleton Reach. Both of them uh, stand up. And extends his hand out to you. I shake it. Good luck, Ulysses. We'll be in touch. Yes, sir.
and I will escort them to the transporter room. Is there any role play you'd like to do on the uh, Argo before we go to the next scene? I missed like a fourth of that meeting, so I'm a little lost. Uh, the meeting was essentially a recap of since this whole incident took place, um, since Paradise Falls. So, about a month and a half worth of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and cut down into like 20 minutes, so. I did my best, but I think I left out some things here and there. <laughs> are we on duty or are we currently off? Oh, no, you're on duty. Oh, okay, so I can't exactly if I pick notice up for a drink. Okay, cool. So after I've seen the admirals off, I'll go back to the bridge. Although I might suggest as department heads, they might uh, defer their uh, current duties to one of their juniors so they can take a quick like coffee break. The, oh, yeah. the benefit of being department head, I have a staff. I can make someone else do what I'm doing unless I'm unless it's like a yellow or red alert situation. True. Oh, uh, yeah. Do I cause a department head being con officer? Yes. Hooray! <laughs> There's a little break room up here for bridge staff. And there's always good coffee on this ship. Freshly grown. That's right. I just said the break now. room was all I see is airlock. I mean, that's a good break room. No, uh, uh, go north. It's up top. Ah, I see. Well, there's actually a bathroom. I didn't know Star Trek had bathrooms. <laughs> the refreshers. It's bathroom, shower, all in one. No. I think I'll try this human coffee. <laughs> so when Tashort gets back, I'll tell him to lay in a course to take us along the corridor between the Klingon and Romulan empires for Starbase 123 at the edge of the Shackleton. Hi, right, sir. I lay in a course for that location. What one? How how fast do you want to get there? Pull up. Make sure to keep us nice and in the middle of open space. We don't want to get accused of you know, to accidentally cross over in anyone's borders. Let me hold on a sec. Where did you say you wanted to go? So I can have my suggestion of speed. Let's see. Maximum cruising speed, Mr. Tashark, warp 11. Lieutenant Mira, please give me all ship. What, what's the TNG scale of warp 11? Uh, 8.6. Attention, this is the captain. We are about to make a transit along the corridor between the Romulan and Klingon empires towards Starbase 123. Um, I don't expect any trouble. Uh, however, the ship will be traveling under yellow alert as tensions between both empires and the federation have recently been high uh, again i don't expect any trouble everyone do your duty and all will be well haggard out 
Mr. Tashork, engage. Hi, uh, sir. Vroom. Sir, I feel it's my duty to point out we should always expect trouble. I mean, this is Star Trek we're talking about. Perhaps, Mr. Rayburn. Perhaps. But that's why I have you, is it not? Yes, sir. I do my job to the best of my abilities. Mr. Tetray, keep a sharp eye out on sensors. Aye, sir. And some people were going to, oh, sorry. I'll figure out how long it'll take you to get there anyway. Later on. It, several days. Apparently. Probably a week. Sir, while we have a moment. I was wondering, what do you think about permanently stationing a security garrison in sick bay, given all the incidents that have been taking place there? I think that might be something of an overreaction, Mr. Rayburn. However, I would not be against the possibility of setting up a security station on was it deck seven? Deck seven, yeah. Yeah. Security station on deck seven to increase response time. You're yeah. unfortunately right. There have been several incidents in sick bay. However, I don't think Dr. Brennan would particularly appreciate a permanent security presence in sick bay. Perhaps stationed just outside the door, sir. No, no. Sick Bay needs to be more of a uh, uh, more welcoming space than that. Uh, but see if you can find a place on that deck uh, to use as a security station, and uh, we'll talk. Yes, sir. So we got those guys off our ship. Ooh. All right, we uh, switch scenes here, so we go to the next scene. Uh, back on board the USS Atlantis. Um, it's been several days, almost probably a week and a half, um, since you've been on board the Atlantis. Your message went through. Um, Captain Mitsurugi kind of you know, was like, you know, sure that they'll eventually get it. It might take some time. Mm-hmm. And uh, you notice that all of our crew are, you know, there's might be a couple, uh, you know, few aliens. Um, most of them are fairly, you know, like in their late 30s, 
you know, mid forties. Well, it's all fairly elderly crew um, that are on My board elderly. the ship. Hmm? Sorry, scoff forgot the word elderly at 30, 40 year olds. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> For what you would expect. Like, most of the people, if they were serving on board the ship, they would probably be in a much higher position. Yeah. Um, yeah, when you're at that age, you're usually in the lieutenant, or le- at least lieutenancy, if not lieutenant commander, or a master chief. Yeah. Uh, Wolfgang does, like, during his uh, tenure there, he's going to uh, do it his best to help organize and bring them up to his standard of what a ship should be run like. Like, he's treating it like... Maybe with a little more relax because they're not all in Starfleet uniform and all that, but he's trying to help uh, oh, uh, discipline and organize them a bit so they're not so uh, uh, when they actually uh, so that when they meet the enemy they won't be uh, scrambling. Yeah, and Shashran will be working on getting their security systems uh, and all up to as much par as you can get on a Walker class. In this day and age, I mean, they got face cannons. It's it's okay. Just get them close range. Touch them with your nose. You'll be fine. Try. I mean, the ship is like eighty years old. Yeah. So <laughs> it's serviceable. Well, she's got focuses in the security systems and computers and stuff, so she can probably help out, make some minor repairs or whatever. Yeah. And she's she only just... sticking close to Wolfgang at all times. And her phaser rifle. I mean, she does have a, a few phaser banks, but her big guns are the phase cannons. All right. But uh, most of your surprise, you know, despite what the ship looks like, it, it is in fairly good condition and, you know, it still runs. It's just because, you know, from what you can tell, being on here for a little over a week, um, it's manned by like 15 people and that's yeah, it. Yeah, just really short-handed. Can I get a read on how like d- despite their cuz no one I-, I imagine no one's like in uniform or nothing. Yeah, they're City all clothes. in civil they're all in civilian clothes. They they dropped the uniform a long time ago. Uh, I'm going to try to get a read off these people to see how um how proficient they are, like how like if they're lieutenant lieutenant commander material like senior staff material or if they're just well you know they've been in starfleet and we haven't had a reason to get rid of them sort of uh like ray was stuck with whatever she could get or she got the best of what she could get they're pretty proficient in what they do um they're really skilled it's just they've kind of gotten relaxed um because it's most like they all feel like they're just one big family at this point because they've served with, they've been around each other for decades. It's all of them. They they're loyal to, from what you can tell, to the captain, to to Ray, um, and they're willing to go to the ends of the earth for her mission. And do they have? And I'm gonna try not to ask this directly, but do they have as much loyalty to as much loyalty as they have to Ray? Do they have that same loyalty, if not to Starfleet, to the Federation? Or if they're, are they just simply loyal to her? They still believe in the ideals of the Federation, mm-hmm. like when you're like talking with them. But it's more along the lines that they f- they don't really trust Starfleet anymore. Oh. They they have this sense of they they feel like they've been betrayed, all of them. Uh, do any of them give me or Shishran, uh grief over our uniforms because I don't change out of my uniform. I'm in uniform and I keep it up to code while I'm wearing it. I actually, they, I actually expect the strand to do the same. They of course. respect it, but for the most part, they're just like, the captain trusts you, so they, they feel like they can trust you. Mm-hmm. So. Um, pardon me? I'll probably get uh, I'll probably get some time, try to get some time with uh, Ray uh, when she's available. But she's not busy with something. Either in her office or her quarters, either way. She takes you into a ready room. Captain? You wanted to talk to with me, Commander. I, I know we don't have much, but I... 
Please tell me didn't well, eat the beef stew. The synthesizer hasn't since we've repaired it has it hasn't worked quite right. I'm staying on the standard nutritional supplement packages that are so programmed in. It's hard to screw those up. Tastes like nothing but sawdust that's flavored with jelly, but uh, at least it's uh I know it's likely to give me nutrition. Um I've done an evaluation of your crew and here's some reports on uh, some suggestions given your personnel shortage on how to improve uh, efficiency given the class of ship you have, some uh, shortcuts that may help. And I will say in my personal opinion that I find your crew effective at their jobs and my compliments to them. Um, and to you, since you've been commanding a ship shorthanded, my question to you, uh, how long do you intend to operate with uh, on this, or how long do you expect to be on this sort of operation? Because if you're looking for a couple months, this sort of crew will work. If you're looking at years, you need to fill up the crew on this ship. Where you are understaffed and it's hurting you. We take import on safe areas to fix the ship up, but we've been operating this way since. Since the incident, everyone here is original. I haven't taken a new person in. I can't ask to. If you're going to be at this for years, you need to find people, spacers, independents, who you can recruit uh, into your uh, line and bring them into your family. I've worked as a division head. I've had to operate. I've operated with people who never wore the uniform and in all their life never will. But... Sometimes when you're going to be away from the fleet for as long as you are, you need manpower. Just technology only gets you so far. When it comes to the simple things, just elbow grease, people at stations, you need people there. Uh, even if they're not species that normally would be aboard a ship like this. In fact, you can la you can be a little more relaxed and keep your, 50 your original crew as the seniors who can maintain control. It's not a Starfleet ship, and nor can I recruit Starfleet officers anymore. Who said you're recruiting Starfleet officers? You're an independent captain who are recruiting uh, Federation citizens or indeed fellow spacers into your crew. With no value to offer them. I'm You'd be surprised what people will do if it means getting out to the stars. And actually, that's another thing. If you intend to operate for longer than you are and you want manpower, you need to find a way to make some sort of trade, whether it be in information, luxuries, or something to that effect. Right now, operationally, you're undermanned. Um, and that, and like I say, that does hurt you. It makes you not as effective as you could be. But if you think it's going to only be ne the next six months and it's all going to be wrapped up, I'm worrying about nothing. And you'll be back in, well, if not in uniform, at least back in Federation uh, care. And, I'm wor and there's nothing to worry about. But again, if you're going long term, you need the manpower. There's just no way around that. Because eventually you're going to run into someone who's more staffed than you, and you won't have, and some or someone's going to get injured, and you're out of luck. And I can only stay with you for so long. I can't stay as much as I would love to uh, add my efforts to yours, and I, as much as I am, at some point my path and yours are going to diverge. And I'm counting on that, Commander. On our paths diverging. Indeed. I know you haven't been forthcoming with your friend and our brig, but I'm hoping that you can come at this at a different angle than we have been for the past 20 years. Well, I've got my message out. I, I don't expect to get a reply back for a while yet. So in the meantime, you have the full powers of my experience in helping analyze the intelligence that you gather. And actually, if we need an official Starfleet face around, I can actually walk around in it. And if I need to be in civvies, shrugs. That oh, wouldn't be the first time. I have an open policy. It's something I've taken in and gotten used to over the past couple of decades. This crew's like a family. Any new members to this family, I can't do it right now. And I can't 
For all I know, this could be another Captain Ahab. I don't think you're chasing a whale. You are raided against powers greater than yourself, but that's our job. We always array ourselves against things bigger than us that we don't quite understand. That's why they give us all that fancy education back at the academy. I have faith that you'll achieve your mission as much as I'll achieve mine. You just have to remember the tenets that we were taught back home and what got you into that uniform in the first place. Apologies for the lecture, Captain. You know that I imagine you know this more than I do, but sometimes I think when it comes to simple things, we just need to be reminded every so often. And I appreciate it, Commander. Thank you. And if we're stuck together for a long time, I may very well vet whoever hiring anyway. Well, the one hopes that I will be able to rejoin my uh, brothers in uniform uh, long, sooner rather than later. But Though I suggest, we'll while I don't mind you wearing the uniform, not as unit as my crew, if you plan to stick with the wrong long term, you may want to ditch the uniform if you wish to remain in it. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, I'm acting in an official capacity, and I'm going to try to operate officially for as long as I can. But if I don't get a reply back, he kind of looks. He doesn't look at her anymore. He just kind of stops. That means that one of the most talented captains in the fleet is now gone, and my commanding admiral is either compromised or also gone. And at that point, there are very few people I have of rank that I can depend on. So, looks back. And so far, you're one of them that I can depend on. And should I be here long term? Well, at that point, I will be a bit for more forthcoming with my information, since we'll be operating somewhat more in a rogue capacity in that regard. Until we solve this, anyway. Well, hopefully soon we'll get a piece of that uh, second part of this puzzle. Or, or is it the 52nd? Also, I'll need... Uh, when uh, when we get the chance, I would like to check in with uh, Terrelia and its mail service. Uh, I have That's where my next drop's gonna, message drop's going to be. It's far away enough from any starbase, active starbase. And I should be able to access the civilian network without compromising your ship. But you know the course of your ship, and I've been polite enough not to pry too much into your exact course and destination oh. since I'm not technically part of your crew. And it's, well, it's just rude. He We're a sector that. away from Trellia right now, Commander, but we should be arriving. Uh, at the location where the trade vessel was supposed to drop off the supplies. We're going to come out a couple AUs away from their drop-off point, see if we can't pick anything up. We're not risk detection. Uh, GM, uh, Wolf King's going to do some mental math for a second and try to think of uh, assuming, not best case scenario, but second best case scenario, um, like assuming the transmission isn't held up or whatever along the way, how long will it take for them to get the message and then send a message back? Do I think like two weeks, a month? Because I know it's going. I'm going through back channels to get to them. Probably, you would think mental math. Like they would have gotten their the message by now, which okay. I'm gonna cut to that your first one, um, and then sending them a message back. Um, it probably won't be until you get to you know a trusted drop off point before you would receive a me uh, re reply. So I probably have enough time to help her with this, and then yeah. I can attend to that later. Yeah, okay. And I'll say as much to her. It's like, uh, well, that works out actually. I can help you with this, and by the time we're done with it, it's successful, of course. Uh, I'll be able. We can attend to that, depending on what intelligence you get. Worst case scenario, I'll just hail them over subspace and pick up my mail that way. I'd rather get it in person, but shrug. We're working with what we have, and I'm not going to complain about uh, being on a ship that goes above warp three. So, <laughs> sitting on a freighter for uh, to, uh, for months on end is not my idea of a fun time.
But yes, Captain Ray, are there any uh, special requests you have of me? Uh, or any intentions you have for me for your mission? Uh, I have been advising, but I don't know if you want me operating in official capacity or simply, uh, well, official, in a hands-on appro a bridge approach, or if you just want me to remain as the advising observer for your crew. You seem to have a well, uh, a tight-knit crew, and I hate to imbalance it too much with my uh, presence as much as uh, more than I already have. Your intrusion's not. It's more than welcome, Commander. Yeah, maybe to you. You know me. These people don't. Well, they're getting to, but they don't really. And, uh, you hear a little on the loudspeaker. Captain, uh, we're arriving at the coordinates. It looks like we're already here, Commander. Ah, uh, here we go. And uh, she walks out um, onto the bridge, takes the center chair. She looks over the coster. Activate the cloaking device. Yeah, there's a phrase I wanted to hear on a starship. He mutters to himself. <laughs> More to strand than anyone else. The uh, the lights on the bridge kind of like dim. Move us in position, uh, Helm. Alright, sir. Moving us in slowly. We're gonna lean into Shishran and uh, tell her to keep an eye on their tactical advice if needed. But aye, sir. And Wolfgang will walk over to the science station. He'll just, he's not gonna sit down. He's gonna stand and kind of observe without like literally hovering over the guy because that's not comfortable. And the the science officer on the bridge kind of like starts doing a scan. And um, you can kind of tell in his face, and as you look in the readings, you're kind of surprised at yourself. Um, I'm getting a message. Uh, Off the top of my head. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So the sounds are goes like, uh, Captain, I think I want you to see this. And he kind of puts an image up on the, the view screen. Off the top of my head, does it make sense for that to be there? Like officially, is that supposed no. to be in this area of space? It's not. I will say aloud. Uh, just so you're aware, Captain, according to latest records, that isn't supposed to be here. This doesn't exist as far as I know. And uh, as you see that on the view screen of the uh, Atlantis, uh, there appears to be a large shipyard of various Federation ship um, Starfleet vessels uh, from Constitution class to Miranda's all the way to a one particular familiar design of an Excelsior class. And as the view screen is the sensor op is taking, you know, photographs, and you go and uh, Wolfgang, give me insight science. Oh no, actually insight con. con Difficulty one. You. No, I don't care. It's one. I'm still hating you. Um. <laughs> uh there's no focus that makes sense. Uh, none of this applies. Difficulty one, though. <laughs> uh, you know what? Have a momentum. And. Nah, <laughs> come on. Can I roll this well when I'm jamming, please? <laughs> Get two momentum. Jeez. I mean, yay, I got the roll, but still.
And you notice it kind of like the corner eyes, it's snapping pictures of each of the different ships. Captain Ray. Yes, Commander. That's an Excelsior with the latest refits. <clears throat> Looks over with that and hoping she kind of gets what he's hinting at. That, Captain, is a double of the Argo. One of the most advanced ships we have in the fleet, and they're building it here a secret location and no one knows it's out here why are they why would anyone want to build doubles of federation vessels I have my speculations but this looks like a rebel fleet to me you don't build something this big with this much uh, infrastructure in secret, unless you intend to use it. And we're as far away from Federation space as you can get. I have no idea how we're going to stop this. Not on our own. Get a... You can just tell, like, she gets a little worried look on her face and kind of calms herself. Um, encrypt all the data you've uh, discovered. I'm sure you want to copy it for yourself, Commander. Put it this way, I can see this getting you in uniform if we ever get back into the right hands. That's not my concern any longer, Commander. My concern is uh, making sure whatever happened to us 20 years ago doesn't happen again. Well, silver linings. If I can get in contact with my people, I'm going to try to do what I can to amass what I can to stop this. We'll drop you off at Trillia. You can take Sounds your like... friend Beckman with you, though we're going to be heading into another direction. I'm going to recruit an old friend. Well, I'll leave you with, uh, he grabs a pad, kind of starts tapping in some information and then hands it off to Ray. You can contact me that way uh, and I'll pick it up from you. Officially, you're now an asset under an officer, and uh, but unofficially, we need this to stop, and we need you to succeed. And I'll do whatever I can to make sure you get a lot more backing than this thing. If I can stop the Klingons from walking across our border and bloodying our nose, I'm damn sure not going to let someone within our own ranks... Uh, Dishonored the uniform. Let's hope they don't succeed. Helm set a course for Trillia. Maximum warp. And we're going to go to the last and final scene. Generate all that extra momentum. I keep losing it. Gotta I generate know. more. Back on the Argo, it's been, you've been at warp traveling through the narrow corridor between, uh, along the neutral zone, um, between Klingon and Romulan space. Mirror kind of turns out, Captain, I'm receiving a encrypted communication for you, your eyes only. Starfleet? No, this came from Trillius Prime. Hmm. Pop it through my red room. Of course. You have the bridge, Mr. Martell. Hi, sir. So I will pull it up. I'm assuming it's what you sent me a minute yeah. ago. 
Okay, can I check the ID code and the biometrics readings from the computer, the console in here? Yes. Um, that will be uh, control security. Uh, let's make this. Uh, I forgot. I haven't even spent it yet today. <laughs> Uh, difficulty two, complication range of four. <laughs> I've been sitting on eleven thread all day. I was like, I'm gonna spend this sometime. Uh, now though, really? Eh, <laughs> never know. You know, it's a complication range of four. Difficulty two, you can do it. Let's see. Insight secure, insight con. Two. Application four. Insight rather than control. Sorry, control. I'm getting confused here. Control plus in, uh, control plus con or security difficulty two. Complication range four. Assisted by these ships, computers plus whichever stat you're using. Mm -hmm. Three momentum on the table if you want it, but you have your determination skills. Yeah. Plus, it's with that high of a complication range, I'm not sure more dice is. Mm -hmm. the best way to play it so yeah i think i will um i'll burn a determine uh, my determination on all warfare is based upon deception because this is spy stuff okay um so that's two which is what the task is so i'll just roll it straight i don't think i have a focus that applies unless you'll take Deception or strategy and tactics? No. Okay, I didn't figure. So, complication range four, check. You're not actively being deceptive, or you're not really reading something that's deceptive. So, so four total. Mm -hmm. uh, two momentum gained. Uh, ship, though. I want to see if there's a complication oh, or not. Sorry. Oh, you got it, Wolfgang? Yeah, I got security. it. Diff four. Uh, diff. Complication four. Complication is four. And you roll security. Duke. And Duke. Darn. No comp. <laughs> so, yes, the biometrics and all that stuff is... They match? Yeah, they match. Hmm. Though the ID code does not. <laughs> of course not. It's actually outdated by two years. Okay. Um... Okay. I'm going to. Uh, it's Mr. Rayburn. Was he at his station on the bridge? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to head out of my ready room and go over to the security station and quietly say, uh, Mr. Rayburn, pull up uh, any security footage you have of our meeting with the admirals. Sir? Just bear with me. Yes, sir. Um, do, 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 and I'll, do, do, do. Have, I'll have him fast forward until there's a... until the part where I mentioned, and this was while everybody was still on the... that uh, uh, we've got Backman, Blackman, whatever his name was, um, and his people. Um, and I will... Uh, and when I talk about that, I want to, if we can, to magnify and enhance on uh, Cartwright's face to see what his reaction to me saying we had Blackman was. Okay, so I bring that up. Um, really, there was no reaction from him. It was more like, oh, they, they got him back, okay. It's more like somewhat relief. 
but nothing you would find at normal. What do you think, sir? Is there anything here? Maybe. I've just received some intelligence that uh, supposedly Jet Blackman has been under cover for two years, and I'm just talking low where just uh, Rayburn can hear me, and uh, has been working under Cartwright's orders, but Cartwright didn't seem surprised when I told him that Blackman had also been at... Uh, Starbase uh, uh, listing post 129, and we had recaptured him. That is interesting, to say the least. You would think that if you had an operative undercover, you might be a bit surprised to discover him elsewhere than where he was. All right, keep this, uh, keep this under your beard for the time being. Of course. I'll head back to my ready room and let's see. Let's see. Where is it? And I'll compose a message through the Tyrelia Federation mail service addressed to uh, Jason Solari about Klingon landscape paintings. Um, and then uh, an encrypted message with the appropriate codes. You want me to tell you what it says now, roughly? <laughs> Can, I mean. Um, fundamentally, basically, message received, uh, your Blackman appears to be uh, authentic. Uh, other Blackman already released into custody of Cartwright. Uh, believe uh, Cartwright is possibly compromised. Um, heading to Starbase 123, uh, thought you were dead, glad you're not, haggard. Oh, um, also including there, uh, uh, Bennett and Cartwright believe rogue agency, rogue uh, operation underway within Starfleet. Uh, no hard proof. All evidence leads to Marcus. And I'll type that up later if you want. I'm saving uh, some hand of what you. I'm going to pin it. Um, so with that, we're going to leave the this open air mystery because I don't really have much left else planned. To be continued. Very good. Uh, don't forget Cartwright potentially compromised. <laughs>